The Nationals road trip continues tonight in Miami. The newly minted NL Player of the Week faces one of the league's best starters in a must-see matchup. Welcome to Miami. Sun in and out throughout the day, but it's always 73 degrees inside Marlins Park. Roof closed, getting ready for the first game of a four game series. Tough loss in Philly yesterday. Looked like the Nats had it. They were almost 10 and 1. A new series starts, and we've got one of the players of the week here. Can't take it away from either Bryce or Nolan Arenado. I think it's a great vote to give it both to them. Yeah, both had a great week, but the, the key matchup in all of baseball tonight, Jose Fernandez versus Bryce Harper. Got to tune in for that if you tune in for anything, but Bryce Harper has been the talk of baseball. The National League MVP last year has picked up right where he left off. Last four games, you see the stats, four home runs, 10 RBI. He has been on fire. He's hitting everything they throw him. It doesn't matter what pitch they throw. This a slider from Julio Tehran. Opening day, Bryce Harper checks in with his first home run. Yeah, pulling the ball in Atlanta. And next time on the road, it's a 92 mile an hour sinker. And you better get it lower than that or that's what's going to happen. And the thing we keep marveling as that teams keep trying Bryce Harper and that Julio Tehran keeps trying Bryce Harper. This time a fastball down and in. And watch the reaction from Tehran. Drop the head, grab some dirt. Bryce breaking the scoreboard. That was home run number 100. And then off Oberholzer the other night, a knuckle curve. So, Carp, it doesn't matter where you're pitching this guy, what pitch it is, he's going to get you. And Jose Fernandez isn't going to pitch around him. That's the thing. Most guys are going to start to pitch around Bryce Harper. I don't think Jose Fernandez is tonight. 90 fastball with a little bit of sink, but not enough. And then in a game situation yesterday, they decided to challenge him one more time. And he got two pitches to hit in the top of the 10th inning of a tie baseball game. A slider from Jenmar Gomez, and then a fastball goes into the toilet in the Phillies' bullpen. We thought it was going to be the game winner, but it gave us goosebumps nonetheless. Yeah, last year, Bryce averaged over 400 feet per home run, so he's up to that trick again. Look at the average hit speed. It's a little scary right now what he's doing. Six homers, second in the league. 15 RBIs second in the league so the legend of Harper continues to grow day after day game after game now they have brought the fences in here they brought them down a little bit <laughs> it, and I think it's a hitters ballpark because the ball really carries in here the guys see the ball well and there are some big gaps. It could be a hitter's ballpark, and I know what you mean. There's a lot of room for hits to fall. We'll see if it's a home run ballpark. Traditionally, it hasn't been, but the fences now, you can rob a home run, might be a little more exciting. Not as big as it played last year. Going to be interesting to see. And the other guy is on scholarship, too. So it's Tanner Roark against one of the best young arms in the business, Jose Fernandez. Tanner 1-1 one one with a 245. Fernandez 0-1, but he's 3-0 and with a really low ERA against the Nets in this ballpark.
Lawton Masson, brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. By T-Mobile, get major league coverage. T-Mobile has doubled its 4G LTE in the last year. And by your Washington, D.C. BMW centers. Visit WashingtonDCBMW.com for exceptional offers. Another tough day in paradise today. Nice to be here in April, though, when it's not quite as sizzling hot outside as it is later in the season. Tanner Roar coming off a really nice outing against the Braves. The Nats won at 3 0 FP, and he was outstanding for seven innings. Well, he made some big pitches when he had to, none bigger than that two seam fastball. You just saw the front hipper to Freddie Freeman. The slider right there to Eric Ibar, maybe his nastiest pitch of the game. He did everything right. He helped himself at the plate. He fielded his position. He pounded the strike zone. So that's the Tanner Roark I remember from 2014. And then the awkward hug with Dustin Baker <laughs> after the start. So a tale of two different starts. The Marlins were all over him April 7th at home. That was opening day. And the rain delay might have had something to do with that. But this is a good hitting ball club that puts the ball in play. Then there's Jose Fernandez. 17 and one career in this ballpark, including 3-0 with an 0-58 against the Nats. Well, the matchup is Jose Fernandez versus Bryce Harper tonight, and he's a guy that's not going to pitch around Bryce. You know, he's got that macho thing. He wants to prove that he's the best. Bryce wants to prove that he's the best against Jose Fernandez. So that's going to be must-see TV, folks. Not often when your second baseman and your catcher are two of the top three average guys in the league. Murphy at a ridiculous 432. Wilson Ramos at 389. And don't forget Bryce. He is sixth in the league. How about some offense tonight? And hopefully they're going to start another one here tonight. And I told him we would keep our eyes on him to see what kind of outfit he will be sporting. And I tell you, that's a guy who loves to talk some baseball and everything else. Can't wait to get him back in the lineup. Let's have some early game notes for the Nats. Bryce trying to become the first franchise guy to homer in five consecutive games. Daniel Murphy, 23 of 44 in terms of getting on base. That adds up to a 523 on base percentage. And since they became the Miami Marlins in 12, and this ballpark opened a year later, the Nats lead the series by 17 games. Here's the lineup, and Ryan Zimmerman has always hit well against these guys. First career grand slam against them years and years ago over at the old football stadium. 83 RBIs in 153 games. It's a good looking Washington lineup. And they'll have to be at their best against 23 year old Jose Fernandez tonight career record of 22 and 10. Well, the fastball has been crackling in at 95 on average this year. The breaking balls are slider and a curve The change up averaging 88 miles an hour Two starts over on record 18 strikeouts versus four walks. Last start is third of the year against the Mets on the 12th. We see the no decision five innings one run three hits five strikeouts and three walks 
And set the defense for the Marlins behind Jose Fernandez. Yelich Ozuna stand the outfield. That's your Varia Prado left side. Gordon Bohr right side. And JT Real Muto behind the plate. Apparently, Jose Fernandez last start was having trouble with his command. It was up with the fastball, was elevating, overthrowing some sliders. So we'll see how he responds here tonight. I think you got to get him in the zone early. And you got to get him early. Yeah. Nats with Scott Berry behind the plate, 11th year in the big leagues. Trip Gibson is the junior member of the squad. There's the crew chief, Jerry Lane, 28 years. And Hunter Wendelstead, 19th year at third base. Here's Michael A. Taylor. Florida native it's up and in and we're underway at 7 11 just a minute late the Marlins have not won a home game they're 0 and 5 the Nats are 4 and 1 on the road and they just got swept by the Braves here everything that could go wrong did for Don Mattingly's team over the weekend 3 and 0 yeah make him throw strikes early First year here is Mattingly. They want him to, Marlins want him to implement his change up a little bit more and get away from just fastball sliders. So we'll see if he throws more changes. 3 1 pitch, 95 on the heater. Foul tipped into the mid of JT Real Muto. Juan Nieves, pitching coach for the Fish, their ERA. Not that good, 4.45, ninth in the league as a staff. And Taylor hits one long and foul. Nats start the night, seventh in the league at 256. Ninth in runs, top five in home runs. Even despite the loss yesterday, still a healthy lead early in the season. Outside, and Michael A. Taylor is aboard with a walk to lead off the ninth. A oh, great at bat by Michael Taylor saw a lot of pitches made Fernandez work and on top of it got on first base now you get him right in the stretch got to get him early don't by let him way, settle in you saw the standings and the Mets are in Philly tonight Noah Syndergaard against Jared Eikhoff Rendon's been on base nine of his last ten games Coming off a two hit day yesterday lined out his last time up. And he's up there hacking so Anthony in that series in Philly after a slow start ended up four for 13. With an RBI and he scored three runs in front of Bryce Harper. That might have been a change up there at 87, but he, he's a little quick right now. Guys like Rendon are the ones who really prosper in a ballpark like this. The guys who hit doubles, some of those will turn into triples. On the inside edge, nasty location. One and two. And 95 might have just caught the front corner. That was a busted bat waiting to happen. I don't know. He's got pretty quick hands. I've seen him get to that pitch. One and two. That one elevated. Looking good at home against the Miami pitching staff in that two game split with a rain out. Anthony two for 11 career against Jose Fernandez. The Marlins are talking about toning him down a little bit, making him pitch more, maybe throttling back. But why would you want to do that with Jose Fernandez? His greatest quality is his tenacity and just letting it fly every single pitch. Whether it's a fastball, slider, or changeup, he's max effort guy all the time. And you know, it's like telling a guy to drive that drives the ball 300 yards to hit it 240 and stay in the fairway. That's not his game. His game is all out all the time. Well, this will be big early in the game. 3 2, runner aboard. And the hottest power hitter in baseball on deck. Oh, he went. 
Rendon tried to hold up on a pitch that was not a strike and Scott Berry rang him up. Well they're making him work in a 3 2 slider and Anthony Rendon as good as anybody in baseball check swinging and I think he went right there he was not anticipating the slider and here we go folks round one Jose Fernandez versus Bryce Harper text your friends that aren't watching to watch they have met one on one 14 times Bryce is three for ten five strikeouts but four walks so the on base thing is fine. Bryce has been on base 10 of his last 11 games. Both pitches up. Well, you see Jose Fernandez tapping his back leg. He's telling you it's like a hitter to stay back. He, he's a little quick, meaning he's jumping at the pitcher, and his release point isn't out front where he wants it. His arm's kind of trailing. That's why he's high and away to lefty so far. Or at least Bryce in this at bat. Goes off speed on 2 0 and gets the strike call. Well, he's sitting to a fastball. He recognizes the change, he doesn't want it. And it's borderline, anyways. Harper just got under that one. Out to center for Marcelo Zuna. Two outs. Well, he got to the count he wanted, 2 1. He got a pretty good pitch, too, from Jose Fernandez, and it just gets under it. And you see the frustration from Bryce. He knew he got a pitch, and he knew he just missed it. So, round one to Jose Fernandez. Yeah, I noticed there were more people in right field sitting in the upper deck than there are <laughs> in the lower deck. And Bryce has hit a couple up there already. Here's Ryan Zimmerman. I don't know every year when we come here I like this place a little bit more yeah guys hitters will tell you they see the ball here they brought in the fences they brought them down to seven feet in some areas where those lit up signs are it's eleven and a half feet high the whole outfield used to be at least that high shorter in the right center field gap yeah so the dimensions a lot fairer than they used to be it used to be 418 to center and you can see that line across the middle of that greenery. That's where they moved in the fence. No balls and two strikes to Zimmerman. Ryan got a pretty good 0-2 pitch to work with. Couldn't get over the top of it. He is three for eight with a walk. Career against Fernandez. Zimmerman can't get to it and a couple of strikeouts for Jose Fernandez and he got Bryce Harper on a fly ball.
strikeouts around the fly ball. Good start to the evening for him. The Marlins, they put the ball in play. They're fourth in the league in batting average, but 11th in runs. Martin Prado, great success with a home run, four RBIs and six hits against Tanner Roark. Career, Prado is hitting 313 with 48 runs batted in against Washington pitching. And Tanner, two for five with a save career against the Marlins. 13 games, seven starts. Yeah, last start was brilliant on the 13th against the Braves. They're in the three to nothing win, seven shutout innings, gave up just four hits, struck out four, walked three. So Arsenal fastball slider curveball change. This year, the fastball has been averaging 91. And how soon he settles into this game is going to be key. D. Gordon is off to a 15 for 50 start. So hitting exactly 300. His hitting coach is Barry Bonds. There's another base hit. He's also stolen three bases in five attempts. Set the Nats D for you tonight behind Tanner Worth, Taylor Harper, your outfield, Espinosa Rendon left side, Murphy Zimmerman right side, and Wilson Ramos behind the plate. The Nats have made just three errors on the season. That's tied for fewest in all the baseball. So the boys are throwing some leather early in the 2016 campaign. Yeah, Ramos has one on a tailing throw on an attempted steal. Danny Espinosa has the other two. One glove, one throwing. Defense has been great. So here's Prado, three for 14 on this homestand, but still hitting 342. D. Gordon out to a big lead. There he goes. Ramos pops up, long side of the bag, and D. Gordon has his fourth in six attempts. Well, remember the last time the Nats faced the Marlins? Joe Ross did a great job of holding D. Gordon on, and Tanner Roark on the first pitch paused a little bit. But I think D. Gordon's game plan is I'm not waiting around for all that pause and throw over stuff. I'm going early. So on the first pitch, he gets a good jump, steals the base easily, and is in scoring position. I mean, I guess that's how you beat all that yeah. stuff. Just go. 191st career stolen base. It was a strike to Prado. And Tanner just misses inside. Look at the Marlins, they're infield. Prado, Echeverria, Gordon, and Boer batting over 300 as a group. From Jeep. Here's the breaking ball outside. Montana trying to keep Prado from pushing the ball to the right side, advancing Gordon. That's why you see Danny Espinosa holding D. Gordon on. Usually with a right handed hitter, the second baseman holds the runner on. But because Prado trying to move the runner, Espinosa holding Gordon on. Yeah, Murphy staying home right side. Zimmerman well off the bag. That's a line drive. Tanner Roark able to grab it and good base running by Gordon staying close enough to get back. Well, he's always talk about how Tanner Roark is squared up to the hitter and how he fielded his position so well. Exhibit A, nice play. And a big story emerging for the Marlins in the number three hole. Look at the batting average for Christian Yelich. Tenth in the league, second in on base percentage at 5'11. He's healthy now. His knees are feeling good. And he's 12 for 34 to start the season with 11 walks. Against Tanner Roark, he's 5 for 17. Oh, Espinosa was on the bag and buck. Gordon was way off the buck and that forced Tanner into a balk as called by Trip Gibson at first base. Well that's what speed will do to you as a pitcher get in your head you see Tanner just turn right there a little bit with his back shoulder. I think he was thinking about maybe a pickoff decided 
not to pick off, was in between. And once you come set, you can't move, and it was a good call. Draws the infield way in. 0 1 pitch with one out just upstairs. Yell at you, Homer, four RBIs so far. Wow, look at Dusty Baker with respect to Jose Fernandez bringing his infield in here in the first inning. Yeah. That's about who's pitching for the Marlins, that's all. Left side perfectly placed. 1 0 Miami. Davey Lopes told me before the game the one thing that makes baseball really exciting is speed. Gordon a base hit a steal a balk and he scores on a single. Well I always think the key the number one key to be the Marlins is keeping D Gordon off first base but look at Dusty Baker bringing his infield in in the first inning. He's trying to cut that run down at home he knows that runs are going to be hard to come by here tonight or at least that's his thinking early. Here's John Carlos Stanton. Shift is on. Bro Arcos first pitch breaking ball. Two for 13 on the homestand batting average down a bit but so dangerous against the Nats over the years. With 60 runs batted in on 24 homers and a bunch of other singles and doubles. Target in. The power zone is large. The batter's large from down and into up and away. I mean, it's a proportional. It is. All 6'6, 240 of him. Good pitch. Uh, that's a good slider. Two and one. Sinkers in, sliders away. I mean, he knows what they're going to do to him. He plays him 19 times a year. The, the Nats have done the same thing to Giancarlo Stanton for two, three years now. Two seam fastballs under his hand, sliders away. Just got to decide which one you're looking for if you're Stan. Yeah, let's good speed at first. Here comes a fastball in or throw over. Let's see if Ramos sets up in again or he's just deacon on the throw over. Yeah, as mentioned, two for 13 on the homestand and 0 for 5 on the road before they came here. He was deacon. They're going away at the slider. Roark with a hold here and a 2 1. Just a little bit different than the previous pitch for a strike. I mean, this is a tough lineup to work through. It's a good young lineup. These guys work the count. They all can hit. There's really no let up in it. Two on, one out. That'll bring in Justin Bohr, who's hitting 300 with a home run. Even Jose Fernandez can hit tonight in the ninth slot, so the Marlins are yes, going to present a challenge to Mr. Roark. Looking for a ground ball right here. Now the shift goes to the other side of the infield, but Murphy is not in right field. 325 career against the Nats Justin Bohr chops one right side Zimmerman thought about going to short he took the sure out at first two down two runners move up you know if you're not 100 percent sure you're Ryan Zimmerman there's no reason to take a chance and a lot of times a first baseman you look up and there's no clear throwing lane to second base. You never know if John Carlos Stanton got wide right there and Zimmerman didn't like what he saw but you take the sure out good hustle by the way by Justin Moore on a ground ball to first I'd like to see that. Here's the one batter who's the big mystery to the Marlins. At least early and that's Marcelo Zuna. Told you last week when the Nats played these guys he spent some time at Triple A last year trying to straighten things out. Ended up hitting 259 here. And that swing on a breaking ball might tell you something really pulling off. I'll tell you that he was looking for a fastball. And now it gives Tanner Roark the option to either go in with that two seamer or expand that slider even further away and see if he'll go with you. Chase it even further outside. Try it.
17 pitches for Tanner. Fernandez threw 22 in the top of the first. Add fastball with some run back to it. Strike two. Well, I'll tell you, he was looking for a slider. So, so far, Marcelo Zuna's guessed wrong on the two strikes from Tanner Roark. He was sitting first pitch fastball. He saw two sliders, so he switched his game plan to slider, and he got a fastball right down the middle and took it. Hitters will tell you what they're th thinking by what they swing at and what they take. And if you're a pitcher, you're reading that. And a catcher. Yeah, looking a little jumpy on that breaking ball. It was outside. Ozuna, four for 17 career against Tanner. Yelich with the RBI single at third, two outs, and John Carlos Stanton right behind him. Then when you get to two strikes, the guessing's really over. I mean, you're, you're thinking about what he might throw, but you're not guessing anymore. You're reacting. And he hits one that'll bring in two. Out to the gap. Worth gets it back in. Three nothing Miami. Marcelo Zuna with one swing doubles his RBI total for the season. But you see the difference in the hitter with two strikes versus no strike and one strike. So he guessed wrong. He was sitting on pitches that he didn't get early in the count. And with two strikes, he just became an athlete. He became a hitter. And he's just trying to put the ball in play. So not a horrible pitch from Tanner Roark. Slider down that Azuna just reacted to, got the barrel to, and put his team up by three. Pretty good at bat. Tanner Roark has now given up 12 hits and seven runs to the Marlins this year in under five innings of pitching. JT Real Muto, the catcher, is next. He's had good success against Tanner, four for seven career with a couple of RBIs. Short lead by Ozuna. Fastball up and in. Ramos dropped it, runner stays. His stuff's good. He just gave up the leadoff single to D. Gordon. He was aggressive and went on the first pitch. Maybe thinking about him and the balk advance him to third. Dusty Breaker brought in his infield and opened up a hole for Christian Yelich. A walk to Stanton and a pretty good at bat by Ozuna, and it's 3 0 just like that. It's not like he's pitching poorly. The Marlins are just putting together some good ABs. And this one to the right side for Daniel Murphy. He takes care of the last out of the first inning. He will lead off the second inning. Daniel Murphy's on a nine-game hitting streak. Six multi-hit games already, second in the league. Leading all of baseball, batting 432.
Quirk in left center field, the Pinocchio Dolphin on top, and all kinds of fun stuff like at Nats Park on Tuesday, April 26, 705. Teddy Plush giveaway. The first 20,000 fans in attendance, you'll get that. So visit nationals.com to purchase your tickets today, April 26, 705 start. One of the things in my career I'll never hear the end of. Top of the second. I had a very nice couple come up to me at spring training and they said, you tell FP that we went to a game in Miami last year and we thought they looked like dolphins too. So there. Yeah, it was like three years ago. You, you thought the artwork out there was covered in dolphins. And I said, no, Carp, this is the Miami Marlins. Yeah, those the are Marlins. And if those are dolphins, they have really long noses. And I we named them Pinocchio I was, Dolphins. I was distracted by all the other colors. Murphy, this one's got a chance. That is just foul. Down left field way as Murphy almost sliced a double. Kristen Yelich, no chance to get there. Jason Worth went back to the dugout and said he thought he saw chalk. And Chris Spire ran to the telephone. It looked foul right there. But you can hear the players here. And I heard Jason Worth say that was fair. You and I have talked about this before. Usually in the grass, not much chalk, if any, there is on the dirt because they have to. So we've got a bit of a discussion going on here in the Nats dugout. Oh, here we go. And the Nats are going to try to get Daniel Murphy on challenge to second base in the second inning. Where do you put him if it's fair? It's up to the umpires. Right? Ooh. I put him at second. I think it would have been a triple. Maybe even an inside the park home run, Bob. All right, give him a run and put him in the dugout. I don't care. <laughs> I can't tell. It's close. Yeah, it's a double. We haven't really seen one like this in terms of the I'll tell you what, down the line activity. The Nats left fielder does not miss anything ever, whether it's on the field, off the field, in the clubhouse, in the dugout. Jason Worth is omnipresent. And he was the one who was screaming to Chris Spire, and now he's talking to whole plate up here, Scott Barry. He's the one that saw it. He had the best view, right? Murphy was running. Worth is walking up to the plate thinking he's hitting. He saw that yeah. land, and he thought it was fair. You know, and hey, over half the baseball can be in foul territory, but that one little part nicks the line and makes it a fair ball. And, I, and I, if I know how Dusty Baker thinks, and I think I do, the very least he's thinking is this disrupts Jose Fernandez's rhythm good call hey let's challenge it maybe it messes him up out there who know who knows we might lose it but he's standing out there throwing a lot of warm-up pitches it was a challenging day in Philadelphia yesterday I had a talk with Davey Lopes a long talk about all the things going on in baseball these days during batting practice today and he said that Chris Heisey he thought he might have felt something on that tag we could not see, but he just wasn't sure. So Murphy is still hitting, and the Nats are going to lose the challenge on what's ruled a foul ball. was a backdoor breaking ball and Murphy tried to take that down the left field line. Two of the top three and right behind Carlos Gonzalez is Bryce Harper who started the night 359 he's 0 for 1. Murphy will bounce it to the right side for D Gordon. Well it's really early to lose a challenge but the Nats thought it was worth it and Jason Worth is next.
six for 35 to start the season. Big rip as he saw first pitch fastball. I think one of the biggest challenges of being a major league manager in today's game is that your players are going to try to convince you to challenge things. They're going to beg for it. If they think they're right on a base hit or a stolen base. And that one right in the back. And worth looking at Fernandez and had a word or two for him. That was a heater right in the numbers. Not happy. First national hit by a pitch. And, and, and I don't know if there's history here, and I don't think there is. Jason Moore said, you got to be kidding me, and, and you know the rest. Got him right in the tricep, and he's still kind of looking over at Jose Fernandez. So I don't think Fernandez would hit anybody on purpose with a three-run lead, try to wake up a sleeping giant. So we'll see. That'll bring in Wilson Ramos. I know Jason Worth has hit a homer off of, but yeah. One for 14, I wouldn't be hitting a guy. So here's Ramos, who's one for eight career against Fernandez. And a great 14 for 36 to start the season. Wilson Ramos is hitting 400 against right handers. Look that one all the way in. Counts even. Bounces that one worth to second. Jason reading the breaking ball in the dirt and off he went. <laughs> you know the worst part about Jason Worth getting hit right there is if Wilson Ramos hit a six hopper to shortstop, he couldn't go break up a double play like he really wants to right now. Yeah. And that's a part of the game that's going to be missed, in my opinion. But he advances on the wild pitch nonetheless in scoring position. And Wilson Ramos with a chance to drive in a run. Front door breaking ball to even the count. Although I would imagine, Carp, if you're really ticked off, you don't care about the new rule. Yeah, what's, yeah. yeah. You know? If it's a double play ball. I'm not saying Jason is, but like, for yeah. instance. If Some guys will feel yeah. if it's a double play ball that's going to end the inning, yeah. I'll get my money's worth. I'm going to still send my message. Ramos out of play. Wilson has hit safely in seven games this year out of the nine in which he's played. He can reach any part of this ballpark for a power. And he hits it sharply to the left side for Martin Prado. He looked worth back. Two down. The inning will be up to Danny Espinosa. Inside the numbers with Jeep. So only one start career without a decision at Nationals Park, but five starts here for Jose Fernandez. There's the ERA, but in this ballpark, it's 0 0.58. Espinosa, five for 31. And against Fernandez, one for five career. Tanner Roark on deck, top of the second. Might be pitching around, Danny, with a three run lead. I yeah. Think. I didn't really expect that from Jose Fernandez. Looking in his dugout. I think he wants to intentionally walk him, period. Yeah, if you're going to pitch on him, go ahead. Let's walk him and take on the pitcher. So the Nats have two base runners without a hit. Well, that just gives Tanner a chance to tie the game in my mind. Why not? 
That's Danny Espinosa's seventh walk of the year. And Don Manningly's starter will face Jose Fernandez, or rather, face Tanner Roark, who's 0 for 3 against Fernandez. And 0 for 2 with the sacrifice this year. You like that move up by three? Early in the game, your pitch has got pretty good rhythm going. I mean, it's okay if you do. I'm just asking. Yeah, and, and I, the thing that's funny about it to me, Dusty showed him more respect with the infield in than his own team did yeah, I in just, that situation. I don't, know. I don't Usually, I, I like in a close game walking eight to get to nine in the National League. Tanner Roark! Is it going to stay fair? It is foul into the corner. Looked like a tie game off the bat, and it just had too much hook. Mm. Yeah, I thought he did it. I really did. Just a little hook at the end. Didn't have the real crisp sound, but sometimes you get fooled up here. Clearly foul. Gave everybody a scare in the third base dog, I'll tell you that. That's the closest he's come to a career home run. Tanner, a 158 batter with an RBI. You got me a little pumped up too. Yeah, I got a little too excited that, on no, that. No, I don't think so. I thought it got a shot. I think it's a good hack going the other way. Oh, well, we know he's a good athlete. We know he can hit. I guess the point I was trying to get to is I just think when you have a pitcher like Fernandez. Roark, good take on the breaking ball. You can bet on maybe the eighth guy chasing your pitch. And it yeah. doesn't necessarily have to be a slider. It could be a fastball up. It could be a fastball in his hands. You know, you can try to get that third out and have the pitcher lead off the inning and have a two out third inning. Roark getting his hacks. But this is the best at bat of the night so far right here by Tanner Roark. And 45 pitches for Fernandez early. And their shortstop, Adani Echevarria, we talked about this before. One of the better number eight hitters in the game. That's a guy that you will put on. Roark works it to ball three. Jason Worth gets to third. Good read. Two wild pitches in the inning. I mean, he's got a three run lead, but the Nats are making him work. 46 pitches so far for Jose Fernandez. 25 strikes, 21 balls, and we said the command would be an issue or could be an issue tonight. So even though Don Madley has a three run lead, he has to be thinking, I might have to go to my bullpen way earlier than I wanted to. Runner goes off first. Tanner Roark draws the walk. And without a base hit, the Nats have the bases jammed. Juan Nieves coming out with Michael A. Taylor coming in. What an at bat. So maybe that challenge by Dusty Baker was more of a break up his rhythm type of deal. And it's really worked. Jason Worth got hit. An intentional walk to Danny Espinosa. Then Tanner Roark, I'm circling that. That's the F out of the night so far. <laughs> and a young man less than an hour south of Fort Lauderdale, where he grew up and went to Westminster Academy. Michael A. Taylor has a chance to make some noise in South Florida. Five for nine. One for four career against Fernandez, who walked him to lead off the game. Get on this first pitch, Eater. Not if it's up there, ball one. All right. Good take. And I asked Rick Shue about Michael A today. He said, I, I just think he needs to relax, do what he's capable of doing, get the bat on the ball, and let his talent take over. That's a front door breaking ball that's inside 2 and 0. Boy, if you're Michael Taylor right here, one pitch, one spot, you're not automatically taken because you're thinking, your mind is thinking, I'm going to do some damage. But when you, the term keyhole him, what's that mean? Make him throw through a keyhole. One pitch through a keyhole in your zone, in your happy place. There oh. it was. Taylor 16 career home runs. One of them this year, the leadoff shot Friday night in Philadelphia. Two RBIs. Breaking ball, it's in there.
Pitch number 52 coming after one and two thirds innings. It's too many. This got the ballpark's attention. Taylor. I thought he might double up on that breaking ball, and Michael A got out there to get around it and foul it. Three nothing Marlins. Nats trying to change that. Three consecutive sliders. Last outing he pitched five innings and threw 94 pitches. He's been throwing a lot of pitches. First start of the year against the Tigers here, 106 pitches and five and two thirds. I like that. Michael stepped out. He's going to hit on his terms here. And he finally got him as he threw four consecutive sliders to Michael A. Taylor. The Nats leave their fourth runner already. Second inning, and we're going to show you some reaction for the pitchers, and maybe everybody can relate because it's Monday, and this is how you felt going to work today. And maybe once you got to work, it got even worse. So everybody frustrated on a Monday, right? Hacked off hurlers right here on yeah. Nassau. Jose Fernandez was flipping his hat up coming off the mound. He was cursing to himself. I mean, some kind of show as he walked into the third base dugout after that inning, and he probably knows that he's not long for this game. Now he's going to go out on deck. Here's Roark to Echeverria. He's chatting with the guys in camo over there. 54 pitches in two innings. Another base hit. A Danny Echeverria. Two for his last 10, busted his bat on that. It was easy to hear. So, with more on dugout activities, here's Dan. Bob, after that shot of Tanner Roar kind of spiking his glove in the dugout, Danny Espinosa came up to him, got right in his face, not in an angry way, just kind of in a motivational way, actually grabbed the top of Tanner's jersey at one point, trying to pump him up, looking dead into his eyes, trying to motivate his starting pitcher, get him back on track. Well, it, you say stuff like, hey, you keep him right there, we're going to win this game. You keep him at a three spot, we got you. That's the kind of things you say to a pitcher that gives up runs early, and you're trying to keep him locked in and focused in the task at hand. Hey, we got you. Keep him right there. You hear that all the time in the dugout. Fernandez can hack. Look at the sacrifice here. He has 14 career sacrifice bunts. One this year with a walk and a base hit. 
And Echeverria, the kind of guy who will swipe a base if you don't pay attention. Unless you're a jerk and then you just run up and down the dugout and say, oh, get him tomorrow. Yeah, this that's what everybody wants to hear <laughs> in the second inning. <laughs> this one's over. <laughs> Lays it down. Ramos to second. A relay to first. Did they get them both or did they get nobody? Did they say Espinosa's foot was off the bag? Because I know Don Madden, he sprinted for the phone. Well, Jerry Lane has called him out. Almost a 2 6 3. Well, it was the right Actually, a 2 6 4. It was the right play by Wilson Ramos. Even though Echeverria has speed, was Danny Espinosa's foot on the base? Can't tell right there, it's too quick. Oh boy. Oh boy. It's going to be first and if second. If they challenge that, the oh Nats are going to probably lose this one. And then it was bang bang at first base. All four umpires are oh. over near the Nationals' dugout as opposed to two. Dusty's going to challenge the slide, I think. But I think the slide was perfect. I don't, well, Dusty doesn't you know have what? a challenge. Yeah, I, uh, Sorry. Yeah, the Nets have nothing to challenge after losing the Murphy one. It looked like Echeverria didn't pop up much. And the way the crowd's reacting, they're expecting two runners on, nobody out. I was watching the slide here. Espinosa clearly off the bag. The slide's perfect. It's yeah. going to be first and second, nobody out. And that's pretty much the epitome of the no neighborhood play this year. Yeah, tough to keep your foot on the bag when the throw kind of took you toward first base and it was a little bit high. Jerry Lane on your right. Scott Berry. Actually, it's Trip Gibson, the other umpire, first base on your left. Yep, as expected. First and second, nobody out with D. Gordon coming up. Anthony Rendon putting a bunt D on right now. He's trying to get everybody's attention. He's going through a set of signs, and he's telling them what bunt defense they're going to run. Fielder's choice, error on Wilson Ramos for a high throw, his second of the year. Looked like Danny Espinosa was heading over to third in case Rendon had to charge a bunt, so the wheel play in effect for that pitch at least. Gordon swings away, and that is over almost Bryce Harper's glove. Fantastic reach at the end, and that kept this from being maybe a bases clearing double or triple. So Harper, a fantastic play straight back. A pretty good adjustment in flight by Bryce Harper. This ball hit hard by D. Gordon. Fastball belt high from Tanner Roark. And watch the adjustment that Bryce Harper makes in flight. Looked like this might burn him over his head, but then he takes a couple of hard steps back, reaches up, and has the makeup speed and the athletic ability to make a nice running catch. Yeah, Bryce got that ball back in as quick as he could. He was smelling a double play there. Echeverria did tag and go to third. So a corner situation with one out. Crazy ball game so far. Here's Prado who lined out to Roark first time up. Target in. And Prado really got himself with that one. Looked like it might have knocked off the shin guard he was wearing. At least one strap came loose.
Yeah, it's right off the shin guard. Well, Roark might go in there again, trying to get a left side ground ball for a double play. Well, what's going to happen in the next couple of hours here? First 50 minutes in this ballpark have been nuts. 3 0 Miami. 3 4 0 Marlins, 0 0 1 Nats. They've already stranded four runners. First game of a four game series. Danger lurking in left handed batter Kristen Yelich, who drove in their first run. On a borderline pitch, Prado fills the count. Nothing in the strike zone yet. Fastball rip. Great play, Rendon. Throw to first. Brilliant for the second out. Marlins get a run. Bryce Harper and Anthony Rendon have kept this from being a huge inning so far. Yeah, good call. Some leather being thrown around. Martin Prado robbed by Anthony Rendon. The infield here at Marlins Park very quick. It plays fast. And Prado hit that ball right on the screws. Anthony Rendon ready for action. Look at the quickness to the backhand reach. Gets to his feet. The only play he has is across the diamond to first. I mean, that could have been two runs if he doesn't make that play. Here's Kristen Yelich. Curveball inside. Yelich threw a drawn in infield, bumped a base hit to left for an RBI first time up. So it's. Fernandez having to run the bases out there for a while. Miami has another run, could be a whole lot more. And Fernandez has probably already thrown more than half of his allotted pitches on the night. So hold him here and you never know. Two oh pitch. Good run with that fastball. I haven't seen that front hip sinker, the front door sinker from Tanner yet. Wow, 81, that thing. Late dip on the off speed. Might have been his best pitch of the night right there, at least off speed. Two and two. Goes with the swing back fastball. Didn't get the call. And as you said, maybe the first time Scott Berry saw it tonight. Well, he missed it. It's a good pitch. Goes with a slider to strike out the left handed batter. Giancarlo left in the on deck circle for nothing. It could have been a whole lot worse.
Miami. Now, with most power hitters these days, you see those home run numbers rise. You also see the strikeout numbers rise. With Bryce Harper so far this season, that has not been the case at all. Harper has done a really good job of having those high power numbers while keeping his strikeout numbers low. A big factor there is his swing and miss percentage, which has been cut in half from 2014 to this year. There you see the numbers, 13 plus percent down to 7% this year. And his strikeout percentage is down from 26.3% in 2014 to 8.3% this year. Dusty Baker earlier today kind of bemoaning the fact that a lot of power hitters these days have such high strikeout numbers, saying that it's hard to pad your batting average, it's hard to do much for your team when you're not putting the ball in play. He listed a few that used to do it back in the day, Willie Mays, Hank Aaron, Stan Musial, Ted Williams. He said Bryce kind of falls into that category for a young hitter. He's about the best that I've seen. Over two million vehicles sold in county. That's Dan with a Coons.com sideline report. Yeah, Bryce has been amazing. Four strikeouts, eight walks. Yeah. Rendon takes a fastball called strike. It's a small sample size, but, but, you know, I have a theory on why it's so low. It's his fifth year in the league. You know the pitchers. You know what they're going to do to you. You play 19 games against the same team in your division. And when there's some familiarity with, you know, who you're facing, on a nightly basis as a hitter you know what they're going to do to you we talked about it yesterday with Daniel Murphy where your athletic ability and what you're able to do as a baseball player meets your knowledge of the game and I think Bryce Harper has been on such a advanced learning curve in that regard that, that he might as well be 30 years old so he knows what Jose Fernandez is going to do to him he knows what whoever he faces is going to do to him so he has a more accurate game plan and he's not fooled as much, so he's able to put the ball in play, other than he's a freak on top of that, and one of the best players, if not the best player in baseball. So all of that coming together for Bryce Harper at a very young age. Anthony Rendon, a strikeout victim for the second time. Harper fly ball to center first time. On a pitch that appeared to be center cut, and he just didn't get it. Hard to believe Jose Fernandez is throwing a no hitter. You're trying to reverse jinx it right there. <laughs> I'm in. Maybe. Three walks a hit batter, two wild pitches. He ain't gonna throw one because his pitch counts could be 100 by the fourth. And if you want to extend him to 150 pitches, he's got a chance. Mercedes-Benz will track 96. Solid with two strikes this year. But you would have to say this by far is the most live arm that Nats have faced this year so far. We'll see how it all works out. Two two. And Fernandez is going to paw away at the dirt, thinking he had a strikeout. I just wish he'd let you know how he felt once in a while. Maybe just a little more animated. But I mean, he just—he let you know, doesn't he? Upstairs. Another great at bat by Bryce Harper. The Nats have their fourth walk of the night. Check out Military Appreciation Day at the ballpark. It'll be Friday, April 27. Pardon me, that's Wednesday, April 27. Part of this season's Patriotic Series presented by SAIC. All active duty. Dependent reservists and retired military members get two complimentary game tickets for military ID. So it is Wednesday, April 27. Good to see those guys. You can see them. How by the dugout? 
I can see their credentials. I can't see anything. Zimmerman struck out swinging first time. Then he comes with 83 on the inside edge. So many weapons by Jose Fernandez. Harper's now been on base 10 of his now 11 of his last 12 games. So four strikeouts nine walks. To go with 14 hits nine of those for extra bases. Ryan Zimmerman down on strikes twice just like Rendon on those breaking balls. That's five in the game. Yeah, pretty good slider tonight from Jose Fernandez. He struggled with his command for sure, but the slider's been on point all night long. Fastball command, not so much. Slider has been real good. Yeah, not like you can move up in the box to get that slider because then the fastball's by you. So here's Murphy after a near double. Now Nats lost the challenge. He bounced out to second. And he's making a bunch of good hitters swing and miss here. Murphy reaches out, hits the mound. Might have slowed things down a bit for Ed Chivaria. And that's it for the Nationals. They do get him up to 70 pitchers or so. But five stranded so far. Bottom of the third coming up. When you have insight, you know how to handle your finances with confidence. Brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. We check in on Trevor God, one of the Nationals' bullpen acquisitions during the offseason. And right now, looks solid. Six innings, three ERA with Syracuse. 48 games with the Angels last year. A right hander that you think the Nats will hear from significantly this year at some point. Bottom of the third, Giancarlo Stanton, ball one. Ball two. Roark walked him first time up. Shift is on. 3 0. Tanner, first two innings. 43 pitches, 24 strikes. Right, important for Tanner to keep it right here in the sense that you're betting on the pitch count with Jose Fernandez tonight. 
Well, he was locked and loaded, ready to go after strike one. And you're hoping that there's somebody in the Marlins bullpen that comes in and you get back into this ball game. And the Nats lineup is designed to have come from behind pop. They have firepower. It's not like this is, you know, three yards in a cloud of dust offense. They can score runs. They've shown you that they can score runs this year. So even though it looks bad right now, his job to keep it 4 nothing. I wasn't surprised to see Stanton step out there. And then Tanner roars back working very quickly to get him from a 3-0 count. Justin Bohr next and then Marcelo Zuna. It almost looks like Tanner Roark is saying, I'm going to pitch as fast as I can now. It's already 4 to nothing, and I'm just going to pick up my tempo, pick up my pace, and not think and just pitch. Yeah, John Carlo didn't want to get quick pitched on three and two, so he stepped out. Then he hit a bouncer to Rendon. Here's Bohr, who grounded to Zimmerman first time. Check swing, Tanner right there. And from the mound, throws him out. And I think he's at his best when he, you, know, you can tell he's bare hand on the ball when they throw it around. There's little signs when you see somebody for three or four years and you know what they're thinking out there. And, and it's almost like, hey, I'm done with the game plan. I'm done with thinking about slowing down where my release point is. I'm just going to work fast and hope that everything kind of irons itself out. And I like that. Don't think, just pitch. He's ready. Yeah, get it and go, man. Don't. Boom. Gets the call on the outside edge. Watch, he's on the mound. Let's go. That's when he's at his best. Will Ozuna get a 2 0 or 0-2 slider in the dirt here? See how he and Ramos play it. Now Roark says, here's my heater. See what you can do. It's time for the word of the day. Or maybe not. Hassan hooked up a loyal mobile subscriber with a signed Max Scherzer baseball this week. Well. So that's good. That ball's well hit to right. Harper going back, checked his surroundings. And Bryce is having quite a night in right field. One, two, three, Roar. Are we witnessing a turnaround tonight? Ball. Brought to you by the RAV4 Hybrid All-Wheel Drive and Unexpected Performance. Visit buyatoyota.com tonight. South Beach and they sure drive fast. All right. I think it's about that time everybody at home change seats. Right? You know, you've been really tough on people with really small apartments for the last couple That's of years. That's all right. Change seats. Wherever you're sitting, get up right now and change your seat. And I'll know if you didn't. 
Seventy first pitch of the night by Fernandez. He drilled Jason Worth first time up. That yep. is upstairs. We have our mass and spy cams everywhere. I know if you didn't change seats. Worth tried to go upstairs for 94. They all change your seats in the bullpen. Two and two. 70 pitches, 40 strikes for Fernandez. First three innings. Four walks, a hit batter. So close. He had a little chat with Scott Perry when he walked off the mound after his last inning. Probably the 2 2 pitch to Bryce Harper he was discussing, and he didn't get that call. That's a front door breaking ball that'll strike out Jason Worth. That's number six. Well, Nissan attract the slider from Jose Fernandez just comes back and looks like according to pitch track it got the front corner. It's the first front door one I can remember today. He's been starting it down the middle and breaking it off the plate away to right. He's he threw that one right at Jason Worth. Nasty pitch. By the way Toronto beat Boston in the Boston Marathon game that started this morning. Drew Storen got his first save today. All right. 0 1 to Ramos. Wilson a hot shot to third first time. The Nats are getting some swings. I mean they're getting off some good swings on the fastball. But the breaking stuff has been filthy. And now it's 0 2 to a right handed batter. Shows him the heater away. Jammed him with a fastball. Fernandez got a good tempo going all of a sudden. Both pitchers have picked up their pace here. There it is. 84 on pitch number 81, seven strikeouts. Another slider. As tough as a hitter, it's 13 miles an hour difference between his fastball at 97 and his slider at 84. Yeah. So not only the break a factor with that slider, it's a lot slower. This is his 50th career start tonight. Danny Espinosa up the middle. Over to cut it off. D. Gordon got in by a step. And still no hits for the Nats through four innings against the fireballing right hand.
Fourth inning, Twins are coming to town, folks. April 22nd through the 24th. 705, 105, 135. To celebrate the first three game weekend series of the year. Pumps in the park on Saturday, bring your dog to the ballpark. Kids opening day on Sunday, bring your kids to the ballpark or vice versa. Visit nationals.com for tickets. Bring your kids on dog day. No, but you can't bring your dog on kids day. Sorry. All right. Looking good. I think that's the theme color in this ballpark. Yeah, the more colors, the the better. Lime green here. Here's JT Real Muto, the catcher, bounced out to Daniel Murphy first time to end the bottom of the first. A very long inning with 25 pitches for Tanner and three runs for the Marlins. Let's see if he keeps up that pace here that he turned around last inning. That was a 12 pitch, one, two, three, third. A couple of young stars in this ball club chatting over things. They got a lot of young talent, there's no doubt about it. They do, that's well placed. Spinning ground ball, unreachable for Zimmerman. Bryce up with it, makes it close, safe at second. And the Nats have no challenges. So it's a double for Real Muto. That's probably one of the few arms in the league that makes that a close play. That's a beautiful play by Bryce Harper and Dusty Baker out of challenges. So we're going old school, folks. We'll just look at it. Watch Bryce Harper get over there and throw a bullet right on the money to Danny Espinoza. And Jerry Lane thinking that Real Muto's hand got in there before the tag. Oh, it's right on his forearm. Yeah, he was out. He was out. But you can't do a thing about it. Tanner says, Tanner just found out he had no challenges. And left. all the coaches in unison put both hands out to their side like we don't have a challenge. What you didn't see right there, Carp, on the replay is Bryce Harper busting it down four to nothing to get to the line before the spin move and the throw. Great play. So the change seats thing worked. Oh yeah. For the Caps, they scored a goal, it's two to one. Okay, good for them. So a lot of people that are hockey fans change their seats. Target in. There's a play at third. Espinosa going that way. Couldn't get the ball out of his glove. And then he improvs beautifully by throwing across his body to get at Javaria. I mean, the arms on this team. There's a handful of shortstops that can make this adjustment on the run. Danny Espinosa was going for the easy out at third. And he couldn't get the ball out. You see him reach, but his glove was closed. Now he's got the arm strength, even after he's going toward third base, to throw across his body to get the out of first base. That's usually first and third. I mean, once you make that decision to go to third, it's so hard going that way. Here's Jose Fernandez with a chance for his ninth career RBI. He's a good bunter. He can hit. And he can hit for power. Can't hit the breaking ball, though. Strike one. Dare squeeze here if you're Don Mattingly up by four. This is the time to do it. Catcher Risk. running, but Real Muto runs really well. Risk reward. I mean, if it doesn't work, so what? You're up by four. I think I'd let him hack, but I tell him don't swing in any sliders a foot and a half outside. I don't know how well he bunts or not, but. I just like the play. I don't think it's used enough. He makes contact. Espinoza right there. Danny guns him out, two down. Top of the order, D. Gordon.
D Gordon getting right in the box. Do you see this? Usually it's a leadoff hitter's job is to stall as long as you can when your pitcher's thrown as many pitches as Jose Fernandez has thrown here tonight. I mean, that's one where you walk around, you adjust your gloves, maybe you go back to the on deck circle. D Gordon's going to bunt, but it's too close to the pitcher. And Roark on three ground balls after the double is out of the inning. Scheduled to lead off in the fifth for nothing, Miami. Time for your Kia in the driver's seat, and definitely Jose Fernandez been in the driver's seat tonight. Spotted three in the first. His pitch count has been high, but the fastball slider combination has been deadly. And whether he's starting that slider off the plate away and breaking it off or throwing it right at you, he's been money. Pitch count his only issue, that was number 83. Nats still looking for their first base hit. Tanner Roark leads off here. Top of the fifth. Walked his first time to set up that interesting bases loaded situation, but Fernandez, after falling behind Michael A. Taylor, struck him out. That's number eight. Next five for the Nats, three of them here in Miami. So tomorrow, it'll be Steven Strasburg against Adam Conley, Wei Yin Chen, and Joe Ross in the final night game on Wednesday. And then Max Scherzer and Tom Kohler. Day game, Nats coming home, they'll play Minnesota. Michael A. Taylor jacks one to left center. That ball's on the ground. It'll one hop way out there at about 395 feet. And the Nats finally have batted their way on. A one out in the top of the fifth. There goes a no hitter. So I see a change in seats at home. It worked. Michael Taylor with a bolt in the gap. Got something out over the plate. Good swing. Rendon a couple of swinging strikeouts. A lot of hitting room right side. That's down by four. And up the middle it goes. Taylor puts his head down. Hit so hard Bob Henley holds him. Ball gets through the cutoff man Bohr. And the Nats have two hits in a row. With Bryce Harper next. Well here's your chance to jump right back into this ball game. Right here right now. Good swing by Anthony Rendon. He's been taking good cuts all night. Just been being pitched tough by an A-list pitcher. Good hold by Bob Henley down by four. He knows that Ozuna's got a gun. And he also knows that he's got his RBI guy. And the MVP coming up. So Bryce tonight 
a fly ball and a walk career three for eleven five walks against Fernandez still looking for his first RBI against this right hander and maybe the fact that D Gordon jumped right in the box and one of the first pitch has something to do with this inning. Hmm. Good call. He didn't take enough time for me to let his pitcher go get a cup of water rest and go back out there. You know that's your job as a leadoff hitter when your pitchers huffing and puffing you have to find ways to get him back in the dugout let him sit down for a second before you get in the box. Harper high in the air to right. Just got under it. Taylor will score easily. Rendon tagging. He'll go halfway. The Nats are on the board with Bryce Harper's 16th RBI. Just missed it again. I mean, we're all getting so spoiled. Just a sack fly from Bryce Harper? Come on. But that was a good at bat. He got the Nats on the board. Just missed a three run tater. Yeah, you can see Bryce. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah. Well, Fernandez. I, I thought I could have done more. Fernandez is huffing and puffing right now, and, and Bryce knows it, and the Nats know it. They're smelling blood. Got a good pitch. Pitch number 90 coming. Here's Ryan Zimmerman. So the Taylor double, the Rendon single, Harper's long fly, getting the Nats on the board. Ryan Zimmerman, couple of swinging strikeouts tonight. Three for 10 career with a walk against Fernandez, and Brian Morris is in their bullpen. Zimmerman to short. Echevarria, the short way. D. Gordon kind of feeling for the bag there. The Nats on the Harper RBI, now down by three. See, 4 to 1 Marlins as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Bud and Burger Packs presented by Budweiser on sale now. Get a Thursday, Friday, or Saturday game ticket plus a beer and a burger starting at just 35 bucks. Some restrictions apply. Visit nationals.com slash Bud and Burger. Tanner Roark has thrown 65 pitches, but only 22 in the last two innings total. Prado, Yelich, and Stanton 2 3 4 for the Marlins here in the fifth inning. On the edge, strike one. Prado's hit two line drives. One to Roark, and then a hot one hopper to Rendon, who made a spectacular play on an RBI grounder. This one to the left of Rendon. Espinosa's got it. Here he goes. But Zimmerman pulled off the bag, and that'll be a base hit. Danny Espinosa, no time at all to set there. Well, no time, but his momentum was going so fast the other way, you can't set. It's just physically impossible when you're going this hard in the hole. So he's got the arm to throw across his body. 
good effort. And I think Ryan Zimmerman had a chance here, but in traffic, tough play for a first baseman going into the runner with your glove. We've seen a lot of wrist injuries on that, so. A lot of action here tonight. Yeah, things are happening quickly. Guys swinging early in the count now. Here's Kristen Yelich who's one for two with an RBI hit. Roark gets ahead. So he's been on base once once in two at bats tonight and his on base percentage goes down. Kind of like Murphy. Out to short Espinosa pick up to the bag a throw it's a 6 3 double play. I'll tell you this game is far far from over. It is and you have to like the fight that Tanner Roark showing out there tonight. And not his greatest beginning of this game and it's taken him a couple of starts against the Marlins to settle in but he's made the adjustments on the fly he's keeping the ball down. He's keeping his team in the game and now they have a shot against the Marlins bullpen. Like you said this game is far from over. And facing John Carlo the way you like to with the bases empty. He has walked scored and grounded to third. Uh oh. Ramos set up inside. The ball was over the plate, and it's out of here. John Carlos Stanton with his third of the year, RBI number nine. And that would not have been a home run in this ballpark last year. So there's a difference in them bringing in that wall. Well, when the big guys hit him, they stay hit. And you see where this pitch is a location mistake. He tried to bury that in. Look at Wilson Ramos reach to the back end. All the way across the plate. So, about a two glove mistake by Tanner Roark, and he pays dearly. And this one just gets out. Yeah, that's off the wall here last year. That's the first homer in this ballpark in a regular season game to have that happen. They had one. When the Yankees were here, Jacoby Ellsbury hit one into the first row in right field, but that one counts. And John Carlo, who's probably lost a couple of handfuls of home run, Are ball, those real? ball is in the mulch. Are those real? Must be. That's mulch. Yeah, that one's dead right there. You see it on the bottom. If that was fake, it would be dead. <laughs> yeah, they don't have fake dead plants. <laughs> C CSI Agriculture. One for two, or one and two. Yeah, see you the might dead, say he buried that fastball. The dead leaves. Those are real. Bohr pulling one foul. Tanner Roark gives up his first home run of the year. And for John Carlo, his 184th career blast. So they made the ballpark more fair and it benefits their cleanup guy tonight. Got it. Fastball inside edge and the Marlins first baseman doesn't like it at all. The double play then the homer and now it's five to one.
in the bottom of the fifth are Washington, D.C. Lexus dealers. They're donating 250 bucks to the Children's National Health System. For every home run an Nats player hits this season, so keep them coming. It's for a wonderful cause. Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. Well, a setback for the Nats, and now Fernandez still in the game against Daniel Murphy. Couple of ground balls, one to second, one to short. And Murphy, not to be denied, has a base hit. That's a 10 game hitting streak for Daniel Murphy. Nats playing in their 12th game of the year. Daniel Murphy, professional hitter. Watch this swing all day long. Fastball in. Thank you. Some good at bats here, third time around for the Nats against Jose Fernandez. Yeah, they're three for four with a sack fly. Worth has been hit by a pitch and struck out looking. If you remember that front door breaking ball he saw last time. Here the first base dugout screaming that's down in unison everybody. Yeah Dusty got up off the bench and on his feet now. Dugouts here are pretty close. I mean Dusty's probably not more than 80 feet from home plate right there. You can see up and down pretty well. 1 1 pitch. Worth late, and it's strike two. Kurt, Matt Belisle now for the Nats. Tanner Roark's at 78 pitches. They get a couple of runners here. They might get it down to that number nine hitting spot. And Worth looks at that one on the inside edge. Another front door breaking pitch. The same pitch he got him on last time. That front door slider threw it right at him, buckled him, came back for a strike. It's nasty. Here's Wilson Ramos. Nine K's for Fernandez, who had 13 against the Tigers in a one nothing loss, and then five at the Mets. In a no decision, a 2 1 win. It's actually a 7 3 loss to the Tigers. It made his record 1 0. But he struck out 13 while giving up five runs on five hits and five and two thirds. Yeah, crazy 13, game. 13 of his first 17 outs were via the K in that game. I mean, he's a horse. 6 3, 243, they list him. Ramos a foul ball. O2 hit well the other way. In for it is Stanton. They call him out. Safe. Okay. I only saw one arm of Trip Gibson come up. John Carlo made it close. The Trip Gibson might have been signaling that it was a fair ball, but John Carlo Stanton on the run right here. Daniel Murphy having to be in no man's land just in case that fell. And you see the left hand out signaling fair. Pretty close play at first. Nice play by Stanton. Two good plays for the right fielders here tonight. Yeah, big man with some range. Nats have piled up some hits the last two innings. Taylor's double, Rendon single, and then Murphy a single this inning. It's up to Danny Espinosa whether they can get it to Clint Robinson on deck.
Espinosa pops it up. Justin Bohr fair ball inning over. So that's six innings for Fernandez. Longer than we thought he'd make it. Summary brought to you by Mercedes Benz of Arlington. Visit them at www.justmercedes.com. And going back to the first inning, where the Marlins did most of their damage after Christian Yelich's single that put them up 1 0, scored D. Gordon. Marcelo Zuna goes shopping in the gap. That scored a few and made it 3 0 after 1. 5 1 as we go to the bottom of the sixth. So John Carlo adds a home run last inning. As we look at our game summary, Michael A. Taylor got the double. They got the Nets on the way to their only run. Now Tanner Roark has to hold these guys. There's one pitch. A throw by Rendon. One out. Bottom of the sixth. JT Rio Muto is next. So the Marlins. Able to add on a bit here. Tanner Roark, this will be it for him. Due to lead off the seventh. I think he did a nice job after the second inning. I think it was as simple as he just picked up his pace and quit thinking about mechanics. You could see him kind of grinding early, trying to make the adjustments, which is so hard to do when the game is moving fast. One location mistake to stand in the fifth, really the only bad pitch he's made since the second. Off the mitt of Wilson Ramos. Gets inside on another right handed batter, Rendon, two down. Marlins box three runs on three hits first inning the big blow the Ozuna two out two run single after the Yelich RBI and then as we mentioned Giancarlo adding his third of the year in the fifth inning after they got that Prado ground ball. Number eight spot at Chivaria. One for two, a run scored. And Danny Espinosa had to make a really good play to throw him out. Ichiro had two hits here yesterday. 2,939 in his career. Tanner Roark is jamming the heck out of these right-handed batters. He's four hits shy of tying Frank Robinson for 33rd all-time. 2-1 pitch. 
best ball misses over below. And he has 499 stolen bases, so from a selfish standpoint, I would like to see his 500th stolen base. Just to say I saw it. Each year old will bat here on a walk to the number eight man. Let's check in with Dan with our Coons.com sideline report. Well, Ichiro coming in, and as FP just said, Ichiro closing in on 500 stolen bases for his career. If he gets there, which we presume he will, he'll be just the eighth player ever in baseball history with 500 stolen bases and over 2,900 hits. And I was talking to a member of the Japanese media earlier today, said Ichiro is still absolutely beloved in his home country back in Japan. Said that of all the great Japanese players that have come over that are playing in Major League Baseball, still Ichiro is the one that Japanese baseball fans want to monitor the most. They want to keep in touch with how he's doing over here in the States. A ridiculous career that he's posted after playing a number of years in Japan to close in on 3,000 hits here in the majors uh, to go along with over 1,000 in Japan as well. Yeah, over. Over 4,200 hits, counting both. Here's Oliver Perez, probably for D. Gordon if this inning goes any farther. Each hero against Tanner Roark is two for five career. But that's in the air to center. Michael A. Taylor cruising in, and Tanner Roark battles through six tough innings tonight. They'll hit for him, and the Nats are down by four. Three one Nets. Nine outs to go, and it'll all be against the Miami bullpen. 29 year old right hander Brian Morris, seventh appearance, high ERA so far. He's been hittable five and a third innings, three runs on five hits, and he's walked four guys. Yeah, fastball slider guy, he'll cut the fastball too. So, fastball, the straight fastball average at 92, the cutter 88, slider 83. In the Let's get a guy on base category. It'll be Matt Dendecker hitting against him for the Nats. Yeah, Clint Robinson on deck last inning because he's a bona fide power threat. The Nats had a man on base. And right now it'll be Dendecker against Morris. All right, load him up, see what happens. Hey, Mike Maddox probably ten. Tell Tanner Roark, nice job. Way to keep us in it. Tanner goes six innings, six hits, five runs, walked a couple, struck out a couple. 88 pitches, 54 strikes. Den Decker career, one for three against right hander Brian Morris. Busted bat, one hopper. Great pickup by Echeverria. And that guy is tough on the Nats on both sides of the ball. Well, I think if he 
didn't miss so much time last year, he would have beat out Brandon Crawford for the gold glove. I mean, look at this play. Short hop, nice swing by Dendecker. Looked like it was a single, but you saw he gave with that ball. The soft hands from the Marlins shortstop. I mean, that ball's by him in the outfield. Spin move, nice throw. Is there a better double play combination in the National League? I don't think so. Taylor two for five career against Morris. Yeah, you talk about a couple of quick guys. Well, wow. D. Gordon won the gold glove at second last year. And Echeverria might win it this year. A couple errors though early. Yeah, he's got three right now. Played in 130 games last year. One of their left handers is Craig Breslow. For Harper. Correa and Altuve is my favorite in the American League. So much young talent out there. Taylor a walk, a double, a run, one for two. Michael just needs one of those two or three hit games to really get things going. I'm still not used to the Astros in the American League, by the way. I know it's been a, a while already, but I still can't get used to that. And I know we haven't played him in a few years, but I still yeah. can't wrap my head around those guys being in the American League. No swing. Even though. They were close to advancing last year in the playoffs. A great young team, talent everywhere. It's just yeah. they just will always be National League to me. I can't, I can't make that adjustment mentally. And how any pitcher could go 15-0 in that ballpark is crazy. Yeah. That's what Dallas Keuchel did last year. 3-2 with one out. Having a hard time getting together with no runners on base. Rio Muto visits Brian Morris. Michael A. Taylor, two for five career against him. That's a good swing for him. I was just thinking I'd love to see him in the opposite field hit for him. And there he goes and does it. And he's on base for the third time tonight. That swing might do well for him in the next at bats to come. Well, he's had a nice night, two for three now with a walk. So the Nats leadoff hitter has been on base three times. That's a beautiful swing. Well, don't tell me what you're thinking right here, but keep thinking whatever you were thinking when Taylor was up. Well, I'm thinking there's a whole lot of room on the right side, and there's a power guy on deck. I said, don't tell me. Did you not hear that part? Don't tell me. I just did. Well, think something else real quick and don't tell me. Okay, home run. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not thinking of anything that I'm going to oh tell you. And if you folks at home can follow this, by the way, Taylor now three for seven career against the right hander. Then I'll tell you if it happened or not. Okay? All right. I mean, you're a broadcaster. It's hard for you to think and not say things. I get it. Harder still to think and then say something <laughs> important. O2. This is turning into a Harry Carey conversation. All right. Harry. <laughs> we saw Harry Canary in Philadelphia yesterday. Why wouldn't he love his Cubs right now the way they're going? He would. Uh, 
Yeah, Dusty pa Baker was pointing toward this series in the homestand. He said, I want all my guys rested. I'm going to play them all in this series. Four games against a team in your division. It's like two games or two wins when you win in your division, and this is an important series to him. Runner on the move. Rendon took a ball, and Taylor is out. He knew it. He pops up, and he runs off the field. And I think JT Real Muto might be having a conversation with Scott Berry about the pitch. So Taylor gunned down first time this year. Well, you're down by four in the seventh inning. If you're going to steal, you got to make it. It's that simple. I mean, maybe trying to energize his team with the green light, but you know, as a base stealer, if your manager is giving you the green light in these situations, down by four runs. It, you have to have the best jump ever and you have to make it and that could keep Harper from batting in this inning. Ball I mean, three it's not the worst thing in the world if that's your style to run down by four. But it's almost like if you're going to stretch a double into a triple with two outs you better make it. Same thing goes if you're down by four. Especially with a guy on deck that can hit. And Rendon lines one to center. Hit it well. Ball carries about 360. And just like that, the Nats are gone. And it's time to stretch here in Miami at Marlins Park. 5-1 home team. Leather tonight for the Nats. Bryce Harper with makeup speed reaches up at the last second to make a nice play. Anthony Rendon on a hard hit ball from Martin Prado. Beautiful play. Bryce Harper with the play of the night in my mind. If they had a challenge left, it would have been an out at second. We showed you the replay. Real Muto was out. And then Danny Espinosa couldn't get the ball out of his glove. Audibles goes to first. He gets the out. So playing good defense here tonight. Yeah, Bryce has had a very active night. Oliver Perez takes over for the Nats. Fifth appearance, two and a third, no hits or runs, six Ks, three walks so far. There's that breaking ball. Nothing D. Gordon can do about it. Gordon is 0 for 3 career against him with a walk and a strikeout. Big hook. Yeah, you know, Bryce Harper does so well. A lot like a wide receiver in football that runs. And they teach you to run and put your hands out the last second for a catch. He doesn't put his glove up too soon on a play. And when you do that as an outfielder, it slows you down. Gordon pops it up left side. Anthony Rendon. So the later you can throw your glove up on a running play, the faster you're going to be because your arms are at your side and you're striding like a sprinter. You'll see a lot of outfielders at times throw their glove up too soon and it slows you down. It's like putting the flaps down on the plane. Yeah. And that play that Bryce Harper made on D. Gordon, watch how late he throws his glove up. He's running, running, running. Last second, throw it up. 
That's perfect. Such a good right fielder. He's going to win a gold glove soon. Here's Martin Prado, one for three, RBI. Prado, three for 17 career, with three walks against Oliver Perez. Marlins are trying to win their first game at home. Fast ball up in the zone, three and one. in there no swing and that's a walk Now it's a lefty lefty with Perez and Yelich. Come see the national stars of tomorrow just 30 minutes away from Nats Park if there's no traffic then it's way farther. The Potomac Nationals are back in town April 26 through May 1st to purchase your tickets call the number on your screen or visit PotomacNationals.com. Christian Yelich twice against Oliver Perez a base hit and a walk. Slider trying to get a ground ball, get out of here. If the any moves to John Carlos Stanton, it'll be Matt Belisle. Well, he looks like a football player at that face mask, doesn't he? I don't blame him for wearing it. That's through. Prado turns, not running on Harper. Bryce charging it well. Two on one out for the big fella, and that should be it for Perez. So Oliver will face three batters only retire one there's a hit there's a walk and the Marlins now I'm sure they're thinking this is their chance to break this game open.
in the batter's box. It's time for some Yellowwood bringing the lumber. We'll go back to his last at bat in the fifth inning. John Carlos Stanton, his third home run of the year. A fastball from Tanner Roark, right center field, and the new tulips. Those are tulips. Location right where he wanted. Roark wanted it down and in, and he just kind of pulled it right over the middle of the plate. And Stanton made him pay. So it's Matt Belial for the Nats. Fourth appearance, 386 ERA, two and a third. A run, four hits. John Carlos Stanton is three for ten career against him with a home run and four batted in. It's a good pitch. That's where you want to pitch Stanton. Right field, base hit. Harper playing so deep, really no way for Bryce to charge and make it close at home. And the Marlins lead six to one. And now a runner picked off first after a cutoff. We'll see. <laughs> Stanton just called himself safe, but it's not his call. Well, Mattingly has a challenge, but a good play by Wilson Ramos. He came out, met this throw from Bryce Harper, and snapped a throw to Daniel Murphy at first base. Stanton kind of getting back a little bit nonchalantly. Watch Ramos snap this throw. Great pick, all in one motion, fires to first base. Daniel Murphy there puts the tag on him. And I think that's Trip Gibson at first base, but Don Manning is going to check it out. We're going to have some headphones. Why not? And listen to elevator music while they look at it in New York. Feeling real good about this one. Uh oh, uh oh, he's safe. <laughs> I mean, he's safe, folks. If Bob said that, I'm just trying to give a little <laughs> levity to one of these situations <laughs> after another. I mean, there's no tag feel, there. How good are you feeling now? <laughs> I'm feeling pretty bad now. That's, there's no tag. <laughs> this should not take long. Uh. I like where your mind was at, though. I, I like. That you were thinking in the right direction. I'll tell you, glad they don't keep challenge stats and answer in last place. Well, it's not because they're losing challenges, it's because the other team has just been successful. Pete McCannon had a career day yesterday. Yeah, Murphy, good job of selling it. But uh, Trip Gibson's looking up at the scoreboard, and I think he knows his call's about to be reversed. Take it so long. Do you think, like in the late innings, when the umpires hook up to that thing, they're actually recharging? <laughs> I mean, it looks like he's holding the battery, right? And they're just, you know, I'm tired. I'm gonna plug in a little bit, like charging your phone. Okay, so you've been up there, and you, I mean, you've talked to guys about what goes on up there. How, how many umpires are actually up there? How many crews? There's not one for every game. There's actually two crews in New York at a time. So sometimes they may be wrapping up another situation before they can look at this one. Right? That, that, I guess that, that could be some delays. Theoretically could happen. But Mike Winters, Mark Wagner, Marty Foster, and Mike Michelinski are crew I. Crew J is Joe West, Kerwin Danley, Andy Fletcher, and Mark Ripiger. They're both in New York right now. Those are your replay crews. 
So it's Yelich at third, Stanton at first, 6 1 Marlins. And it'll be Justin Bohr against Matt Belisle. I mean, some nights you feel like they're just pounding brews up there and just barely paying attention on some of the calls you see. I mean, like the one yesterday, that that was amazing to me, the play at first base, that that was overturned. I mean, I don't know if it was a difference in the game, but the, the, the object of it is to get it right, right? And we've seen throughout the years, when you do overturn a call, they missed it back. You know, they, in my mind, don't want to show up the guys that are in the heat of battle on the field unless it's painfully obvious that they missed a call. And, hey, there's yeah. a human element in baseball. These umps are the best in the world. They're going to miss calls. It's baseball. Yeah, the one that really hurt the Nats yesterday was the Heisey call with one out in the eighth inning. Rendon doubled. Harper walked. Nats didn't get anything out of it. They were able to score a go-ahead run in the tenth and not able to put it away. No balls and two strikes. Belial to Bohr. Breaking ball, fouled straight back. I mean, what if you just walked in there one night and they're all just partying like crazy men? Just having a blast. Who would know? You know what? I want to go there when we go to New York. I heard it's amazing to see the Command Central. That and I would like to see. After those comments, I'm probably not invited. <laughs> uh, sorry. 0 2 pitch to Boer. Great slider under his hands, cutting action from Belisle. Maybe hard enough to be a cutter. That's slider 89, good pitch. Two outs on the Nissan pitch track, and here's Marcelo Zuna. O for one career against Matt Belisle. Good heater up and in. So he goes to that slider off the fastball in. Got him set up for it. Breaking ball out over the plate and a line drive right at Taylor. So the Nats are going to the eighth now. Bryce Harper to lead off, but now down by five.
is presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. Crazy evening in front of the screen and on the other side of it here in Miami. Marlins on top 6 1. They've out hit the Nats 9 4. Jose Fernandez found a way to go six innings tonight. And let's go inside the numbers with Jeep. National League home runs over the last two plus seasons. And Bryce, well, Todd Frazier's in the American League now. Rizzo of the Cubs. Arenado is co player of the week. And John Carlo leads the way. Despite all the time he's missed with injury with 67. Pretty impressive. This is right hander David Phelps. 29 year old. From. The Yankees originally first couple of years in the big leagues second year with the Marlins sixth appearance nine innings three hits two runs and Bryce is going to see a fastball a cut fastball a curveball and a change his fastball. Averaging 92 miles an hour. Harper tonight 0 for 1 walk and a sack fly. His 16th RBI. Got jammed. Foul. It's hard to get in on Bryce Harper. You throw that little cutter in, he still beats you. I mean, I, I haven't seen a hole yet in the swing. I really don't know where you go if you're an opposing pitcher to Bryce. I would love to read an opponent's scouting report because having the pleasure to see him play every day, I just don't see really any holes in his swing. It's that one to Hopper right to D. Gordon. Eighth inning underway. Nats are down to their final five outs. Looks like Miguel Rojas has taken over over at first. So the pitcher now batting fifth for the Marlins and Rojas at first base batting ninth. Well it sounds like Ryan Zimmerman busted his bat and he's got a base hit. Just inside the bag, salvaging a one for four with that opposite field swing. And that's Ryan Zimmerman's ninth hit of the year. Oh, Zim checking in with a knock, turns an 0 for 3 into a 1 for 4. Nats need base runners, no need to test John Carlos Stanton. Move the line to Daniel Murphy. And there's Yasmero Petit. Daniel Murphy is six for 12 career against David Phelps. Base hit last time, one for three tonight, looking for his seventh multi hit game. That's going to get him on the hands, though. Echeverria out there, short left center, two outs. Next up, Jason Worth. I'll take a feel good knock right here. Well, if the Nats don't come from behind, two of their three losses will be against the Marlins. They beat the Nats in D.C. opening day, six to four. After all that rain, the Nats returned the favor behind Joe Ross, four two on Sunday the ninth. After a rainout on Saturday, I feel like there's four teams in baseball right now: <laughs> the Braves, the Marlins, the Phillies, and the Twins. Because they played the Twins in the exhibition series. That's they're going to play when they get home. Yeah. It's like Groundhog Day. Is there any other teams? Or do they just play these four all year? It won't be until the next road trip 
And it's hard not to think about that trip. I mean, baseball you think about today, maybe tomorrow when the ball game's over, but there's a lot of folks that have that St. Louis, Kansas City, Chicago Cubs trip on their minds, and that'll really be something to which they can measure their ball club against ours and ours against theirs. That's an easy one. Bring them on. What have those teams ever done? <laughs> Well, there's some World Series represented there over the last yeah, several what years. What have they ever done? Jason Worth strikes out. 0 for 3 with a hit by pitch and 3 Ks on the night. And the Marlins are dominating tonight. on Masson brought to you by American Standard Heating and Air. It's their all-star sales event with up to $1,100 in instant rebates or 0% APR for 36 months. By Ocean City, Maryland. Let us show you a good time in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at OCOcean.com. And by your local Kia dealers. Visit DCKiaDealers.com to learn more. Who takes their best foot to the club? See it sitting right there in the middle? Hey, I'm here. Yismero Petit an inning. JT Real Muto leads off for the Miami Marlins, who are trying to break a four game losing streak. And this is for Ryan Zimmerman high in the air. One out. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you have come to expect. Watch every auto market game live in HD. Over 400 supported devices includes a free subscription at at bat premium. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Echeverria with a base hit, a run, and a walk tonight. 0 for 5 career against the Nats right hander strike one. And it goes with the slider misses low and away. I think Ismero is one of those pitchers out of the bullpen that the more he pitches, the better he gets. And he likes to be out there a lot. And the more fatigued he is, the more his stuff moves. And so Dusty Baker trying to implement it a little bit more lately, it seems like. Henning Zeter, a guy that can do whatever you want out of the bullpen. Fastball up and away looked a lot quicker than 88. Two outs. 
Well, that was 37 bucks right there. It's time for Toyota K's for Kids, Washington Area Toyota dealers want to help children and their families by making that donation to the children's in at NIH for every strikeout by a Nats pitcher this season. Next up is Miguel Rojas, 0 for 1 career. And they just called up Kyle Bearclaw today. He uh, had some control issues in spring training. Was expected to make the club, didn't, but now they need him and he's back. Change up in there. And he gets one at the knees. Four shakes to a curve. That ball hammered into center. Miguel Rojas went down and got it, and that'll get D. Gordon up one more time tonight. Let's go inside some numbers with PNC for the Achiever in you. And over the last two plus years, only Jose Altuve of the Astros, more MLB hits than D. Gordon, Kinsler, Cano, the power guy, and Daniel Murphy. Great list. Some good hitting second baseman in baseball. Gordon up the middle, Espinoza right to the bag. And the Nats have one more chance. They're down by five with three outs to work with. Marlins are going to the top of the ninth inning. Ramos Espinosa, and then the pitcher spot for the Nats. Ray Knight is back in the studio with Johnny tonight. Tune in to the Nats Extra Post Game Show presented by W.B. Mason when this one is over. Right hander Kyle Bearclaw. You see the arsenal right there throws the breaking ball more than the fastball. The fastball average is 95, the slider 82. He's got a change up at 89. So small sample size. Maybe he came in to face a guy that couldn't hit his slider early in the season. You'd think if you throw 95, you throw your fastball more. Twenty-five-year-old right hander. And Wilson Ramos trying to get off the Schneid tonight. It's an 0 for 3 for him. 
Or put your rally hats on, you never know. Bear Claw, 25 games with a 259 for the Marlins last year. Wilson Ramos takes a fastball a little outside. Up the middle. Long way for the shortstop bench of Maria. Gets rid of it in a hurry. And that ball almost pulled Rojas off the bag. One out. No appeals, no challenges remaining. And tomorrow night, the Nats will look to Steven Strasburg to just keep doing what he's been doing. Steven is 2 0 with a 1.98 ERA. And in his first two starts, the league's hitting 222 against him. Adam Conley for the Marlins. He's Without a record so far, 3.86 ERA and two starts. Danny Espinosa, 0 for 2, base on balls. And a breaking ball, just low. Excited to see Steven Strasburg pitch tomorrow. The new four slash five pitch guy. Yeah. He's charting, he's ready. He's over there thinking what I would do to this lineup if I were pitching. That's what charting's all about. Kind of get your mind set, get you locked in. It's the pitcher's version of being on deck. Because when you're on deck circle as a hitter, you're thinking, okay, he's doing this and this and this. He's throwing this first strike. This is what I'm going to hit in a second when I get up there. And the pitcher's chart is like being on deck. Two, two with one out, and that's in sight. Six pitch coming, good fight working. Seventh pitch coming, sorry, there's something on the screen, seriously, right over the six. I wiped it off. <laughs> there was. Okay. Three, two. Espinoza out to center, and the ball falls in front of Ozuna. Danny Espinoza with a one for three night and a base on balls. Now the Nats will switch off from Stephen Drew and go with Clint Robinson. Look at that bat. Something to take into tomorrow for Danny Espinosa. Nicely done. Robinson season one for 12 with a couple of RBIs. 
Over two is a pinch hitter, and that's going to be over the outer half for a strike. Yeah, he was money tonight. Even though his pitch count was high, his fastball command shaky at the get-go. He just kind of willed his way through this game. Slider was dirty. I mean, if you're a right-hander against him, good luck. He's a three-quarter release guy. He throws upper 90s and throws the slider behind you, throws it down the middle, breaks it off. He's good, real good. 2 1 pitch. Low and inside. And when you spot the good ones, a three run lead, it's usually going to be a long night. His career record will go to 23 and 10, unless the Nats mount something impressive here. It would be his first win of the year. And a 3 1. Clint Robinson takes the base on balls. Lines move and never know. Strange game. Every one, cliche I can think of. One more base runner becomes a safe situation. So we'll see if A.J. Ramos pops up. Good at bats. Can you get five guys on for Bryce Harper? Why not? Well, a couple would have to come home first, all but right. that's all right. Could, add, could you, like, add another base with the new rules late? So there's A.J. Ramos, who has two saves of their three wins the Nats are trying to avoid losing two in a row for the first time caps games got the same score as this one only good guys are ahead about that Michael A. Taylor a walk a double a run a single nice swing to the other way first time or last time up solid single to right field we'd like to see more of that got a breaking ball and it's 0 2. I'd like to see taters. I like those. You know, guys that can't hit them like to watch them. Pass ball up. Struck him out. Randone trying to turn a one for four into a two for five. Hit the ball hard his last time up to center field. And trying to get Bryce up one more time. Danny Espinosa, base hit. Robinson, the walk. Dan Coco watching from the first base box. Rally time here, Dan, if you can. Put your jacket on inside out or something. Rendon inside out swing. How to play right side. Out of 16,112 announced. And a 1 1. Whoa, way up and in. Both runners will move up. Good take by Randone. I could have went either way. Keep 
that line moving, you never know. Well, this is kind of why Kyle Bearclaw didn't make the team out of spring training control issues. He's the guy they got from St. Louis when they traded their former closer, Steve Ciszek, over there. And Rendon out to center. Ozuna is there. And the Marlins take the first game of this series in rather decisive fashion. Six to one. So the Nats will strand 10 base runners tonight, and they've lost two in a row first time. <laughs> 